Every dream, job, profession, school, anything that is tied to the stripping of rights, sovereignty, and freedom has to be questioned at this point. I wanted to leave that with people because freedom isn't this kind of pie in the sky thing. Freedom is just the base level. It is the literal foundation for every potential dream that you could ever imagine. And that's what, you know, people like us, people like you are standing in a hard line for today. Stanton, welcome to Wellness Force. Josh, it is so good to be here. It's so awesome. I'm so appreciative and grateful. Me too, man. I've learned a lot from you in the past six months. We've learned a lot as a society in the past six months. Holy shnikes. You know, today is a really interesting day because you've become a really trusted friend, a colleague, um, somebody who co-creates in this world when it comes to health freedom. Today on the show, we're going to talk not only about the nuances of health freedom, but currently where we are, man. And that is uh, segregation. We are in a challenging point. People already heard you in the intro. They know exactly who you are. They know your background. They know your history. They know what you stand for. Um, where exactly are we, man? I mean, let, let's get right to it. We have a lot to talk about. So the civil rights movement of our time, this segregation of, of really medical records and, and privacy, uh, paint for people the picture of where we are today. This podcast is being recorded on the 12th of August, 2021. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, it, and it comes as accurate or I guess as time stamped as I want to say a week and a half ago where, where you, your old stomping ground, San Diego, California, the mayor came out saying that he was going to give a mayoral proclamation for those businesses who would do vaccine passports. And it's wild to me at this stage because it's so interesting to look at. And I would say, like you're saying, we're learning things every day. I just want the listeners to know that like I study for what is happening today more consistently, more diligently than I did my entire grad school. Like I, I, it's more diligently than I did at West Point. And it's because every day there's something new and every day there's levels of oppression, there's levels of tyranny that are in some respects, like, like San Diego being paraded and celebrated in that we don't even recognize that there, there, there is no gray when it comes to these passports. There is no gray when it comes to, you can come into my business, you can't come into my business. Your kind is welcome here, but over there and my, my our kind is over there like that's just black and white segregation at this point and so for me i've been saying this and my mentors and my colleagues have been saying this that this is the civil rights movement of our time because it is black and white there is no gray when it comes to these passports at all one of the things i find just utterly fascinating and also at the same time simultaneously heartbreaking is if you look at how women were treated, people of color were treated for so long, we're really not that far away from this. And this is going to ruffle feathers. Like people are not going to like where we're going right now. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, cause it's coming from a place of love. What is the real difference when we look at segregation by skin color, segregation by gender or segregation by medical records? Is it really anything different? You know, it's, it's, it is, and it isn't right. It it's, it's clear as day. Like you're kind of loud, you're kind of not allowed, right? It, it, it is segregation that way. Right. But it's very different in a sense that it's whether you're not, you've accepted a medical product or not. Right. A, which we now know, or we've known for many, you know, many months now yeah. is emergency use authorized. This thing is not FDA approved, nor is this thing shown to confer immunity or or not, or like somehow block transmission. Like there is no herd immunity. There is no doing this for any other person besides what the studies show is reducing symptoms, which most cases of this quote, quote unquote illness are asymptomatic, which is mm -hmm. very odd that it reduces symptoms of an asymptomatic, mostly asymptomatic disease. And at the end of the day, it's whether or not you choose it. If, if you choose this product or not, which it's not really choice when it's become so forced and no, no one's pinning you down and no one is jabbing your arm, but the level of infiltration of this industry, essentially this industry and this cartel is absolutely shocking. Are you familiar with the ASCH um, conformity experiment 
Does that ever I'm come not. across your desk? I'm not. So we'll link this in the show notes today. Yeah. In the, I believe it was in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a cohort of people that were around psychological and behavior modification. And they said, what will we do if we painted a picture and we had eight people in that room say that the picture was one color and one person who was the control subject, actually over the course of time, they proved that over 34% if there was a picture that was obviously painted black, and I believe in this experiment, it was lines, like the length of lines. So the person who was the control person, 34% of the time, when the eight people in the room said that obviously the line they were seeing wasn't longer, so it was just objectively false, the person who was the control subject, because they wanted to buy into the groupthink mentality, they actually lied to themselves and yes. lied to the test and said, oh, that line isn't longer. They agreed with the group in this conformity test because it was exactly the social acceptance that they themselves required. Can you riff on that? Because I believe that when we look at segregation, we're in a conformity experiment. Well, I would say that this is a calculated programmable um, agenda for not just this moment, but there have been many things that have led us to this point now. I've seen different forms of, I've not heard of the AFCH, but I've seen different forms of this type of experiment where yeah. just because you walk into a place because everybody else is doing something else, we like to think that we're sovereign beings. But you know, you listen to several episodes of your podcast and you understand the vagus nerve, you understand the polyvagal theory, you understand that we innately have mirror neurons that are going to just match and mirror our environment. And so we can't help but be influenced by our environment. It's, it's impossible. My kid is two. Your, your baby is brand new. Yeah. They yeah. learn by osmosis. They learn by what they see. And so at this point, it is, it is, so it's so vast and so pervasive where we had one friend go to nursing school. And then all of a sudden she was this, you know, ex medical expert and then immediately came back to our family and said, your child doesn't belong in public school. And I was like, why? Like, well, she's, she's not, she hasn't received her shots, right? Her mandated shots. And I was like, so I was like, so one of the things that I, that I want to highlight to that particular person was that somebody with hepatitis B, somebody with HIV, somebody with like any sort of infectious illness, especially a sexually transmitted disease, which hepatitis B is for your listeners who may not know. And by needles, like drug addicts, <laughs> yes. sexually trans, basically. Yes. I'm with you. Sharing, sharing those types yeah. of bodily fluids. Yeah. Mandy done on the first day of life. The, the whole studies for safety, we lasted four days, so there's no long-term safety at all. But the whole point of me saying this is that child that has that disease that is infectious is protected. They're private. They're allowed to be in school. They're completely protected. Their records, nobody could ask them because they're protected under quote unquote ADA, right? American Disabilities Act, which all of you listeners are protected under the American Disabilities Act. If you did not know that law and common law, there are no mandates today. They are all illegal mandates today because they are all experimental products today. And so when you see the chasm, right? The delta between what's true, right? versus what the reality and perceptive common norm is, that's so, it's getting more and more and more vast, but you see, especially in where, I mean, maybe the city you're in and the state that I'm in, that it's just, it's, you're a weird, you're a complete weirdo, and then you're a complete outcast, and then you're a complete detriment to society, and you're absolutely dangerous to, you're, you are a bioweapon because you haven't received a medical product and you won't do all the things that everybody else are doing. Something that I, that I you noticed I just took a, a nice exhale. And I think we I all that. in society right now just need a huge deep breath through our belly. We need to reset our nervous system. We really need to understand what's going on in our current world when it comes to segregation. Stanton, everyone, this ain't the first time we've seen it, right? And no. it's not going just as far back as skin color or race. It's going back to the 30s in Germany. And yeah. it's a very, very clear, yet uh, very polarizing example. But we have people that are Holocaust survivors that are actually speaking out against yes, the are. current segregation and the current practices that are going on now. We'll link that in the show notes below. 
So I know it brings up fear. It might bring up nervous system contraction for a lot of people to hear this example, but we are in a, I believe, a mirror of what occurred and why the Nuremberg trials existed. And that is based on their religious faith or based on the color of someone's skin or based on their sexual preference, which is exactly what Hitler did. It is literally the same thing. And I'd love for you to talk about that, which then leads us to the real, I guess, enemy. And that is the cartel, you know, the medical cartel. It's a, it's a, we are, we are in, and I appreciate you having us take a breath. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of how you interview and what your everything that you put out, Josh, because, because it's recognizing that we have to find a centered place. Jesus. I know that if people follow me already, that I know that my posts and the things that I put out can get very amplified and it can get very spicy, but I will tell you that it, it is, it is literally a one to two hour moment in the morning. And it is a good out half an hour to an hour before I go to sleep of resetting everything that I am as a human being so that I know that I'm, I'm operating from a place of like my soul, like a depth of purpose that I've never actually felt before. Mm -hmm. And that's really the point of revealing a lot of these different challenges is recognizing that we're being called to rise into a level of humanity and your purpose that we've never done before. And we're not necessarily being asked right? We're being forced into this situation. And so, and that's literally what happened, right? That's what happened in the thirties. That's what happened in the forties. That's what happened with Hitler and the regime. That's what happened. What led to my family to emigrate to the United States. They emigrated where was from, your family from China and uh, half of my family is from mainland China mm. and half of my family is from uh, Taiwan. Both of them from the forties and sixties emigrated to the United States and I'll tell you this because this is historically important. They emigrated during a time that there was the United States were actually under something called the Chinese Exclusionary Act, where I grew up in LA and we grew up going to a cemetery, which only had Chinese headstones. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because I didn't speak to, we don't speak, I don't speak Chinese. I never read Chinese, but I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, but I never knew the historical context where Chinese people were not allowed to be buried in American cemeteries. Many of the bodies that were building Union Square, Union Station, downtown LA were discarded. Thousands, tens of thousands of bodies were discarded. And my family still chose to come to America. They chose to come to America during a time where legislatively they were oppressed as a people because they were fleeing levels of oppression that were far greater communist China and Hitler's regime, that those dark forces that were moving people around the world, refugees for freedom, and our country, the American, you know, the United States of America, were absolutely like the beacon of hope and freedom for everybody in the world. And so the reason why this is important is this time is no different. When these hit when these Holocaust survivors are speaking out, I've been saying for months that we need that Victor Frankl. Man search for meaning power. We need that Martin Luther King, like the depth of like God's law, natural law, human, like yeah. the whole picture of love to hold these people to account because they don't even, I would say that many of them are totally bought into the agenda, right? Many of them are sold out to pharma, but many of them, I would say, aren't aware of what they're actually bringing forward. And it's I'm grateful because many of them are waking up also in this time, recognizing that the level of oppression that they're bringing in, normalizing, parading, and celebrating are absolutely catchy, uh, kind of like probably the greatest marketing campaign in the history of the world. Like it's very, like, there's a lot of great graphics. There's a lot of quippy <laughs> sayings, you know, and at yeah. the end of the day, it's, it's, it's actually just, you know, <laughs> it's actually just a different version of that level of oppression. It's time. I, um, I got to chime in here because, um, yeah. I obviously wasn't alive when Malcolm X was here, but Dr. Zach Bush just posted this yesterday. I'll read it real yeah, quick because it's in alignment yeah. with what you said. Beautiful. This is the media and irresponsible media. It will make the criminal look like he's the victim and make the victim look like he's the criminal. If you aren't careful, the media will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. This is a propaganda tactic that I would call psychological warfare. Now, this is from Zach Bush, MD. We've had him on the show twice. You know that if Zach is willing to put his entire business his entire reputation on the line to shout out exactly where we are in the world, y'all need to pay attention because the cartel is real. 
The propaganda is real. This is not here to scare you. My intention isn't to scare people right now. My intention is to feel my heart just like you felt yours. I, I see you touched your heart. I touched mine too. This conversation yeah. needs to get to tens of thousands of people today. So share this conversation where you're listening because the cartel is real. This is the brainwashing agenda. Please share with us what that is, your experience, your knowledge of it. So um, I'm glad that you brought up timelines, right? You brought, you brought up the 1930s, the 1940s. We talked about the 1960s and civil rights. Most people don't know, and maybe this has been shared on your podcast. Maybe it hasn't, but the, the year of 1910 is one of, those, one, of, one of the most pivotal years in medical history. I don't know, are you familiar with what happened in 1910, the Flexner Report? No, please share. The Flexner Report was what... Yeah. So, so Rockefeller, they call it Rockefeller medicine. It's like the richest people of the time empowered these twin brothers, the Flexner brothers to basically go through all medical campuses, all medical curriculums, all medical schools, including some of the natural health schools to audit them. And what they were auditing them for was how much um, <laughs> the chemical industry had influxed their training. And basically, if the chemical industry didn't have any legs in it, they basically said, or the curriculum didn't match, or it had too much natural health care, or other things that weren't patentable, or other things that weren't part of the industry, they ousted them. They called them quackeries, they called them this, you know, they called them all the things that we call people today, right? In terms of the people who are speaking out, mm -hmm. they're pseudoscientific, mm -hmm. whatever, right? They're and so- spreading misinformation, that's the main exactly. one. They're spreading misinformation. Yeah. Yeah, misinformation and disinformation have become commonplace in virtually the the the, the modern day lexicon. But the the Flexner report came out and basically on one end really refined the educational process and really kind of ousted some of the diploma mills where any doctor could just, you know, go to any school and get a piece of paper and give any sort of snake oil, whatever, you know. But they but it was more pervasive in that they started to really iron out the people that weren't fully indoctrinated in the system. And you fast forward that to say 1976 and 1987, which most people don't know, know this. So I'm a prenatal and pediatric chiropractor. And I say that and wave that flag as deeply and proudly as possible because of this case. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Wilk versus the AMA case. No. So Chester Wilk, along with several other chiropractors, took the AMA to court, and they took the AMA to court because they started to recognize that there was levels of indoctrination of young doctors of certain perspectives about chiropractic. And what they found, and they discovered that they had originally called it a commission on chiropractic, right? A commission on chiropractic whose mission was to contain and eliminate chiropractic. But they changed the name. They changed the name to a commission on quackery. And they, wow. because chiropractic was too noble, it was like, okay, we weren't going to call them a commission on quackery because it was too noble. We didn't want something affiliated with American Medical Association that was supposed to contain and eliminate these pseudoscientific people, right? But one of the things that they used as a strategy, which still affects us today, chiropr chiropractors, is they use the strategy to divide, like create division. They, they use specific strategies where in chiropractic today, there are people who want to wear the white coats, put the stethoscopes around their neck to actually lobby for prescriptive rights in their particular states. And then there's the more holistic side. Some guys that get into the whole kind of biohacking, the wellness field, the lifestyle field, which it's interesting, you know, that that divisiveness is still there, but this court case was, was won like by Chester Wilk and they were found guilty. The AMA was found guilty of an illegal boycott to contain and eliminate chiropractic. But what it did was it revealed a history that started as early as 1910, long before World War II, long before Hitler's regime that was very calculated at creating essentially where we are today like a hundred years later, and we have this marching in of a societal norm, a acceptable, you know, whatever, more safe, more responsible thing. And at the end of the day, like you look at it and you're like, actually, this is, this is wholly untested. There has never been a long-term inert controlled, placebo controlled, randomized clinical trial for any injection, especially this one that everybody's being forced to get in the, mm -hmm. in globally at this stage. And you recognize that the house of cards and the cartel 
are actually one and the same at this stage. The level of oppression, but also the level of actually, I call it clinical impotence behind a lot of this cartel's like force yeah. is crazy right now. And the writing, the writing's on the wall because we're going to unpack a little bit more of what the cartel is. Um, it's yeah. called the cartel for a reason because it operates like one. But my what was coming up for me when you were sharing was this. Uh, within the span of, I believe it was 16 to 18 months, you have um, Joe Biden, who was stating that when Trump was still president, that the vaccine was not safe, the vaccine was not tested, and the vaccine was not something that he would take because it wasn't something safe. That's literally within 18 months. Then he gets elected president. And I promise I'll share why I'm sharing this. He gets elected president, and now he's saying everyone needs a vaccine. I believe he said... 350 million Americans have already received a vaccine, <laughs> which there's only 332 Americans, uh, 332 million Americans that live in America. So he's getting like 18 million Americans that don't live. Extra in credit, extra credit. Extra credit. So the reason I say this is because he's obviously a puppet, just like I believe all presidents are. The real decisions that are being made are twofold. Number one, financial interests from large capital groups like Blackstone. Number two, uh, lobbying in Congress, the pharmaceutical industry, specifically around these vaccines, have spent hundreds of billions of dollars with a B over the past couple decades to make decisions on both the policy level and local and state level. That's really the background of what you're about to share, Stanton. That's what's really going on behind the scenes, but it all is being kind of controlled by this cartel network. So explain to us what this network is. You know, it's, it's, it's wild, man, because I just, I didn't know we were going to talk about this because just, just this past Monday, I went to a meeting, a local County leaders meeting, a lot of influencers that are, that are activated in San Diego. And there's this guy kind of unassuming shares about how he wants to get people together. He's all about like kind of heart and love and fun and having these big demonstrations that show people how to celebrate life essentially. And at the very end, he goes, you know what? I feel really safe about talking about this. Uh, I'm Justin Trudeau's brother. And we're like, wait, wait, who? Like, like the Justin Trudeau? Like the Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, his yeah. brother. And he comes out and he's like, dude, I was having, he was like, it's ironic that I was having Chinese hot pot with Justin and his family in February before COVID, right? And he travels back to America and he's like talking to his brother and all of a sudden all the lockdowns come. He's like, so this guy particularly, he is... He knows mycologists. He knows people who understand medicinal mushrooms. He's in, he's embedded in like UCSD, some of the microbiome people. And so he goes to like his, his scientific people. And there are people who are just like, oh, dude, we know how to stop this. Like, and so he's like, you know how to stop what's happening already. You know, and they're like, no, we kind of understand the physiology. We understand the immunology. And where I'm going with this is he then said directly, you know, it was called his brother. And said, I have these people with these particular resources that at the end of the day could stop and save Canada. And he basically told him, don't ever call me again. And the next day he donated over $200 million to vaccines. And so Holy it's shit. the level of infiltration and the level of cartel, like, like this thing, right? This, this app based upon this passport, based upon whether or not you take this product that you've seen this one person who's the leader of the free world shapeshift in a matter of 16 to 18 months in his perspective, mm -hmm. just because who's in power, who gains to, who gains the profit who gains to control changes the complete perspective with no, with no transparency or integrity or inability for the media to even question that shift and change. You're seeing it in real time. The fact that it's, and I would, this may not be like where you wanted to go per se, but that passport isn't just about the product either. It's a cartel because it's not just, you don't recognize this, but Google is a vaccine company. Facebook is a vaccine company. Microsoft, Bill Gates is a vaccine company. And if you don't recognize those connections, those aren't kind of happenstance connections. Those are deep seated parenting groups. Like they're, they're literally blended where tech and pharma are one in the same today. And so this isn't just about whether or not you take a product. This is about indoctrination and 24 seven tracking. And then you get into the whole world of five, you know, 
F plus one, right? You get into all the whole different aspects of things that, that the cartel, we don't even know how deep and vast it goes today, but my heart, which I have to reprogram every day because I almost cried when you said Zach Bush. Because he's been somebody I've been following for years, not just during this time, I've been following for years and I'm waiting because some of your guests and some of your, you know, the people you've interviewed have these massive platforms and they know, and many of them haven't stepped into a role where they've recognized that their platform is a sounding block to save humanity from the level of infiltration that this cartel has tsunami the planet with. So who are so, they really? Who are they? Right. Who are the cartel? Let, let, let's name them. The cartel? Yeah. <laughs> like like the Tony Fauci's and the Francis Collins and, you know, essentially like all the people like uh, let's marry that again. There's another marriage to public health. And so every single person that you see, like who's who's the head of the CDC now, Walensky. And who was actually the, the CDC director prior, I can't remember his name, under the Trump administration, like he came out, he was one of the first people after he was not the CDC director again, the first to come out to say that this was a lab leak. Like, it's crazy to think that because they are under the umbrella of one thing, they can't speak, but as soon as they're not under it, and so it is a, it is a marriage between tech yeah. a marriage between pharma and it's a marriage between the, the governmental leaders and the public health officers that that is directly who is pulling all the heart, all the strings today. And it can go all the way back to Soros. It can go all the way back to the globalists. And I think many people like may not know that that's how deep it goes. Well, right now what you're sharing is challenging someone and on YouTube or wherever someone's watching this, they're already researching who is Dr. Stanton home. And what's interesting, I don't know if you remember this, um, I typed <laughs> yeah, I in do. your name because I was going to connect you with someone. And you have nothing to do with vaccine safety. Yet when I typed in your name into the Google, they give me this huge button on top that says COVID-19 safety practices and how, how safe vaccines are. So you guys, it's not like I search queried are vaccines safe or anything to do with vaccines or masks. I literally just typed in Dr. Stanton Holmes' name and Google has flagged him as someone that needs to be uh, protected against. Thank you, Google. You are protecting me from my own eyes, from my own intellect, from my own heart. This is exactly what cartels and any, any brainwashing propaganda campaign do. So for anyone who's all of a sudden going on Google and you're going to try to smear Dr. Home because you're triggered by this conversation, I say good. Because you're probably going to find whatever you want to find against him or for him. Search within your heart. And that is exactly one of the posts that Zach posted that I don't know if you know this, he deleted. Uh, he deleted a recent post that talked about searching your heart. And I think he deleted it because he may have been threatened. I don't know this yet. This is all hearsay. That's why I think he posted the very next day about Malcolm X. But this is truly where we are with the cartel and where, we're all are, where we all are is in this state of fear. We're in a state of fear. We're trying to find meaning in the suffering. Um, but we really have to remember who we are. And the only way we yeah. can remember who we are is if we can recognize the sovereignty we have, the health of mind, body, and soul that we have. There is, now that we've painted the picture of the cartel, talk to us about your experience both clinically, personally, and also you as a global speaker. How do we eradicate this, this fear? Because the fear is ever present. So, so I'm smiling because like, if people actually knew, like the disinformation doesn't, like the Joe Mercola's, the Sherry Tenpenny, yes. Robert F. Kennedy. Like if, you, if the Delta, as I explained before, like the difference between what is true versus what, you know, is being promulgated by these media campaigns is so vast, right? And you meet these people like Dr. Mercola was the liter literally the first nutrition book I ever read. I actually read it. My brother sent it to me in Iraq and it's called Total Health. It's where I learned about how meats were farmed, about you know healthy fats, like very simple foundational nutritional stuff. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, who I've met, who I've hugged, who I've looked in the eye, one of my favorite human beings on the world, because she's just this like doctor from Ohio, as wholesome as somebody, you know, a woman from Ohio, you know, gen, you know, obviously sure. I'm generalizing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. She is literally that person. She's just like a extremely kind, but extremely intelligent person. Right. But my office, you know, like they flag me and I'm literally a small practice here in San Diego that 
in my opinion, is one of the top clinical practices for prenatal and pediatric chiropractic in the world. But it's an interesting dynamic because they, they choose to attack and flag and censor and deplatform us. But at the end of the day, like we, we don't really have, like they call us grifters, profiteers and all these things. And it's like, it's so wild. Like it's literally the opposite. Like Mercola has to delete all of his new le- newsletters because he's being attacked and he's probably being threatened his lives and the livelihoods of all of his people that, that work for him are being threatened. And so he's pulling off the newsletter that I've read since I read that book in 2003, nearly mm-hmm. 20 years of information. And that's how far this cartel can take it, right? They threaten the life and the livelihoods of many people as a result of speaking truth, right? And so for me, you asked me a particular question about my clinical understanding. My, my clinical lens has a lot to do with how life is brought onto the planet, meaning empowered birth in terms of like helping young mothers, helping young couples understand this whole process of informed consent in every, whether they choose a medical birth or they choose a home birth or they choose a free birth, like all these different aspects are things that are, they don't know that there's options for. And what I find with most couples is they want to make the best decision possible. And On the opposite end, we see a lot of babies, we see a lot of kids, we see a lot of teenagers. And what we're seeing, and this is 11 years old, which is the time that had been in practice, but we're seeing an outcome. And this is a a outcome of our current medical system that 54% of our kids has a chronic illness. One in six has some sort of learning disorder, neurodevelopmental, neurobehavioral disorder. And one in four has some sort of need for special needs. And so it doesn't matter if you ask pediatricians, doesn't matter if you ask um, educators or school counselors or psychologists or speech uh, OTs or PTs in terms of these different, you know, demographics of who serve these children, they all agree there is this amplification of these chronic illnesses that most medical providers think just happen, that we're genetically somehow programmed for chronic illness or we're genetically programmed for speech delays, or we're somehow made to have like missing milestones and things like that. And so that was normal normalized 11 years ago. Right. And the reason why I'm so activated right now, my kids too, I look back to all, you know, cause iPhone gives you memories of like what happened a year ago. My kid yeah. was, she was playing with a little abacus doing tummy time at the beginning of this whole lockdown deal. And, and for me, I had to draw a line that this is my second home. My practice has always been my second home. And then you have a kid And the dream is to have that kid grow up in the practice as if they are just part of the practice, like as if they're part of the community, that as soon as she was born, everybody behind her was somebody who was, you know, I get to watch grow into who my daughter is and everybody who was ahead of her, who was born ahead of her. I'm like, I get so excited because a four-year-old comes in. I'm like, oh shoot, I can't wait for my kid to do that. You know, like it's just how I viewed my life. And so we had a kid come in recently that wouldn't take off a mask. And when I heard the story about this child, it broke like to my, I could cry today. It broke my heart because he had some symptoms, right? He had some immune symptoms and his parents, you know, just like most parents would unassuming, you know, they go to Rady's children's hospital and they go to their pediatrician and the pediatrician's like, you know, we should, it looks like strep. We should do a strep test, you know, no big deal, no problem. And they do a strep test and it's negative you know, sigh of relief for the parents, but kind of like, I wonder what really is going on. And all the doctor had to say was, you know what, we should do a COVID test. And the kid loses it, falls to his knees, screams at the top of his lungs, banging his head on the ground, hitting his head, heads in his hand, tears flowing from his eyes. Not because he thinks he's going to die per se. What came out of his mouth is that he didn't want to kill his grandmother. And so for me, the normalizing of the chronic problems before was already an issue. Like when you say uh, a doctor says to you, a pediatrician, so listeners, if your parents and your pediatrician has said, uh, they'll just grow out of it, right? They're just, they're just going to grow out of it. That will go on year after year, probably to around five or seven, when eventually you look for other things because that's untenable for you because they aren't growing out of it. 
And when you find other solutions and you bring them back to your doctor and somehow you're gaslighted into believing that that was either pseudoscientific or you recognize that there should be no coercion, shame, or any sort of manipulation in a doctor-patient relationship in any capacity at all. Like it, it should be black and white also. But what is becoming normal and which I will in real time as a result of this recording in five days, I will be at the county supervisors meeting holding to account our county supervisors because they just brought mass back into schools. And I've asked this question from the very beginning, and you've highlighted a lot of this, Josh, like I'm so like grateful to be connected with you because you've been saying, you've been highlighting so much truth from the very beginning of a lot of this. And it's really important because something as simple as like, why don't they show recovery rates? Like, why are the numbers always bad numbers and fear numbers? And why do they change from deaths to cases? And why did we get- And why are they presented with a big red bar behind them with big scary letters? Did you guys see like that? Did you see what happened there? Oh my God, fear. I mean, that's how this group thing spreads. Yeah. And so my question to my patients, the people who were like kind of not really sure where to go at the beginning, you know, and what, and all I did at the beginning, I didn't say like, oh, this is like the cartel. This is a pandemic, you know, like this is, you know, I didn't say that right away. I just said, guard your mind, guard your heart, guard your spirit from the fear and anxiety because it's coming. And that's the seed I planted first. And every time it popped up, my patients were like, whoa, did you, so it became, they became my, like my sieve where they get, they brought in all the information. I was like, yeah, you see it now, the fear, right? But I asked this question and I still ask it today because the numbers haven't changed. I don't care what variant you look at it is with a 99.998% survival rate. If a child contracts this C disease, how do they do that with no known cure, with no known cure, right? They, they keep saying, this is a novel thing. There's no cure for this. And so they've been repeating that over and over and over to the point where they launch this injection and then people start to virtue signal and they start to breathe that deep sigh of relief of, I'm so grateful that I got this, right? And so in my world, I look at this and I ask that question because if children have to, you know, they have this, virtually 100% survival rate at this stage, why would we force anything more on them? And that's what I see. Is that what I'm going to communicate to our county supervisors? Because one of them, and I, and, and it does hurt my heart a little bit, one of them expressed at the last meeting that she has a child with a speech delay and that she notices that her kid's speech has dramatically gotten worse and regressed since she's for since she's had a mask on but she said because of the greater good and the collective good of masking children pervasively unendingly that she's going to vote it in and to me i just want her to recognize that from a clinical perspective like there's that chasm exists there and the fallout of say 10 years from now 20 years from now Mm -hmm. 30 years from now when some of these young kids are starting to grow their families and they're riddled with fear and anxiety that their healthy bodies can harm or kill a loved one, any random unassuming person on the street, that psyop, that belief system, that mindset is what I stand wholly against today. Mm. And so there's probably a lot of people who don't love this kind of this fiery nature, you know, and I would say that This is the time where I've said that the whole picture of love is what we need to lead with. I'm grateful that in California, we give people the benefit of the doubt, that we believe and we hope and we want to give people like hold out for like that potential politician to make that change. But now it's time to just draw a line and recognize that the swift kick in the ass along with the warm hug is really important. That I love these, I love these politicians so much that I will hold them to account Yes, that I will uh, that I will demand integrity and that I will demand transition. I love them as human beings in service to humanity so much that I will stand up at this moment. Wow, there's so much to unpack there. I mean, Sorry. the first thing the first thing I was feeling was your genuineness and your sincerity. 
And I think a lot of people that are in this, I guess, vortex of pain, we're in a vortex yeah. right now. We're, we're being squeezed in a way that we, I don't think we've ever been squeezed. Maybe our parents' parents could have said that they were squeezed during World War II or maybe, you know, people that were involved in apartheid or people that were involved in civil rights. Like, they probably had a very similar yet different squeeze. But you know what I'm really excited about? With all the ways that you've explained what's really going on now, I'm excited about the solutions Thank because you. The, the solutions are so clear and so present, but I believe, and, and I want to hear what you feel about this. I believe that, that we need to really, truly understand on a physiological level, what's going on. Cause you've talked about the societal implications, sure. mm -hmm. but the physiology of what's going on here goes back to when we were actually birthed. Okay. 250,000 years ago, all the way till now, I think our DNA has changed. 1%, somebody's going to quote me correctly here, but maybe one half percent or something like that. We're still cavemen and cavewomen. So we still have this PFC, this posterior cingulate. We have the amygdala, this default mode network that scans for threat when we're doing a myopic task. The reason this exists is because we are wired to protect ourselves. Now, this is exactly the same biological mechanism that has been completely hijacked by this, by this little device yeah. that has more power in it, my cell phone, than the first spaceship did. Guys, this is what's really going on. So that's the first piece. We have been hijacked. Our respiration increases, our blood cortisol elevates, our, our stress hormones start flowing, catecholamines are in play. And then the second part of this is you have people being faced with that stress response and they're either gonna love more or have more apathy. Yeah. And then the third one is whatever societal conditioning they have up to that point, however their parents had taught them to either love or fear, these are the three things that are in play right now. So on top of what Stanton, you shared, those things are also in play. It's very nuanced. It's very multi-contextual. What we need is freedom. And the solution I believe, man, is freedom focused care. This is what I learned from you, a term in health freedom, this freedom focused care that you've been practicing for a long time, but you introduced it to me this year. So for people that don't know, like what exactly is freedom focused care and how does this relate to our sovereignty in healthcare? So freedom focused care is super um, important today, more than ever. Health freedom, medical freedom has become top of mind. It's become the number one conversation in the world that on the opposite end is about the mandates, right? The mandates and all these illegal mandates that are coming through the opposite end of that is medical freedom and health freedom informed consent, right? And so everything that I've done in the last 11 years of clinical practice has actually been targeted at helping my patients need me and all doctors and virtually everything outside of them that's artificial less. And that's something that sounds weird because most doctors, if you're in the conventional system, I've said for many, many years that there isn't really um, an exit, right? There's nothing in the system that helps you need the system less, right? And there are people in the natural health world where functional medicine, not to poo poo anybody, because I believe that anybody on the natural side is infinitely safer and infinitely more effective at getting to the root cause of any of the health challenges that we see people afflicted with. Yeah. But under that umbrella of natural health are people who understand that their job at the soul of what they do is to make themselves obsolete. Mm -hmm. Like we have to make and like empower people. Like this is why one of the number one podcasts I recommend is yours. That's why people like Zach Bush are so important is because they're not teaching you to have you know, another uh, dependency, like take pharma out and be dependent upon something else. They're actually telling you, like you're actually promoting, like, let's take a few deep breaths, you know, or Zach says, breathe your biome. Like the number of the number of diverse ecosystems that you could ever be in is actually what helps your system self-heal, self-regulate and self-adapt, especially in a time like this. But I like to go because of my lens, I like to go all the way back, like you said, to how we were birthed, right? Most people don't recognize that it's like a hundred million sperm and two million egg, right? You're, you are one of a hundred million sperm and one of two million eggs. And that those two half cells come together in that month, in that conception, and those two half cells, and in nine months, a 26 billion cell being emerges. And then that 26 billion cell being turns into a, a being that's a hundred trillion cells without anybody consciously controlling that. Right. That's like it's, wild. it's, 
absolutely remarkable. So if there are, I mean, I don't know how your listenership is, but mine's like 86% women, right? Yeah. If 66, women, 67% women. With right. So work. if you're, if the women that, that are listening mm -hmm. and the many of you who are mothers and the many of you who are faced with maybe some chronic challenges that you're trying to navigate, what I want to install in you maybe before that is a deep seated belief system in your, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, that if that, mir that miracle of conception and gestation and birth is what you have done and your children may be affected, afflicted by some sort of chronic challenges, that wisdom is inside you and it's, in, it's inside them. It is impossible to escape. There's no other way onto the planet. And for all you men out there, we've all been born. We've all been through this process. There's no other way, which some people call birth, some spiritual leaders have called birth, the greatest form of love and compassion in the known universe. And so at our soul, it's kind of a weird, like I hope people are keeping up, right? Are keeping up at the fact that like I can go that first half of the interview and then we can shift gears and recognize that at the depths of who we are, spiritually, energetically, is a level of miraculous biology that is inescapable at this point. And then I'm a chiropractor, so I care a lot about neurology. And you went through some key areas of the nervous system and brain that just having a prefrontal cortex, the seat of executive function, the ability to understand where I've been, where I will go, to cast a vision that's potentially more inspiring that you're currently at, to think about thinking, to have consciousness, is it's, it's just neuroanatomy. Like, it's just, it's part of who we are. If you're human, you have this. And so I tell my patients and I tell people who find me, you know, through our community, and everything I say, if you are live and you have enough energy to maybe express and vent about your current health status, then the energy that you have within you can be shifted, transmuted, transformed, moved in a direction of healing that is far greater than you've ever been allowed to believe. And so from freedom focus care perspective, it's, it's not just an adjustment, right? It's not just chiropractic. It's the wholeness of everything that you've taught on your podcast. It's the wholeness of everything that Zach Bush teaches about. It's the wholeness of every influencer that is out there, in my opinion, should be heralded, not trying to fight for the small pieces at the table of what you know pharma may give you, right? It should be heralded to a point where we don't recognize that taking those deep breaths that you shared, that you had us do, what it actually does not just in that moment to make us feel better, but to respirate, to inspire a healing potential inside of us that can be calculated, reproduced, and, and actually navigated people. You can navigate people through mm. to a point where they never even think about needing a product or anything synthetic outside of them ever again. You know what I find fascinating? Like, and this is why I love podcasting. This is what I'm sure you love about the Future Generations podcast is you get to learn in real time. <laughs> and and something I love that you just said, what, and that I've heard you say before in many different ways, is the breath is inside of us. The breath is something that we do, but also something else breathes us. Nature herself breathes us. So when we look at this dependency model with the internal locus of control or the external locus of control, Really what I've heard from you today and multiple times uh, across your Instagram lives and all the podcasts you do, it's like, okay, freedom-focused care is truly about anything outside of me doesn't relate to the nature and the power of the nature inside of me. And that right there, if people are like, what's freedom-focused care? Well, whatever is built inside of you that nature put there that is functioning synergistically and optimally with all the associated systems, like that's the ticket to health, to wellness, to well-being, and what you talk about with your brand and everything that you stand for with your community, it's like, okay, I'm building this on a bedrock of normalizing vibrant health. Like that is the new normal. If you wanna talk about propaganda, I'm down for your propaganda, <laughs> but it ain't propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. Your message and your mission is different than um, an ulterior motive. Yours is just like, hey, can we be honest about the nature of what's really here? And this leads to the point to your community, which I've had the most joyful time helping you and supporting you in this uh, birthing of the community, this the future generations community 
Um, it's the futuregen.com forward slash community. If you guys want to go there right now, Stanton, share with us this place because this place is exciting. It's where everything that you and I talked about lives and breathes in an uncensored way. I'm a part of the community. I love it. But for people that don't know, like, where is this place? Why did you create it? So we created this community because, well, I mean, it birthed out of tragedy, right? It birthed out of being deplatformed twice. You know, if we're this looking is your at, fourth Instagram. This is my fourth Instagram now. And 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 the third is like shadow band beyond belief, where I have lesser followers every day, you know, because they delete people from you. But mm -hmm. the whole point of it was. There, there's twofold, right? We, you, we view health freedom in two lenses. One is standing up, right? Standing up for the inalienable rights, standing up for your personal sovereignty, standing up for your bodily autonomy, right? But the other arm is ex exactly as you said, the normalizing vibrant health for life. We call ourselves future generations because we know, as epigenetics tells us, that our choices today echo 13 generations into the future. It's not seventh generation and that brand that's bought out by Procter & Gamble, right? But the point of it is really, really at its soul, everything. That every day I get asked questions about, do you know a doctor here? Do you know somebody like you here? Do you know anybody in this community that, that actually believes what you believe? Yeah. And what I know is that there are people who do, right? But I don't know who they are. And I can't replicate everything that I do for everybody in each locale of where you are. We built this community because we wanted to be able to do both arms of health freedom. We know we've been calculatedly, repeatedly, predictably doing that for our community in person for 11 years. And we know that we can navigate and help people navigate and facilitate optimal health on one end and facilitate standing up for your rights on the other end to the point where when we built, or when we built this community, our job was to then bring in some of the most amazing influencers so that they can actually also be a part of this community to pour into everybody else because they're part of those communities where one of my friends, Dr. Brad Campbell is in Chicago or Alex Zek is in, in Kansas city, or you are in Austin, Texas. Like there are people in specific areas that once we put them together, what people don't need in my opinion is more content. I think people have enough information today. What they need is the ability to navigate that. They need to be led through that, but they also now need to recognize that strategizing and coming together as a community, because this community is virtual, but there's going to be an ability to find people in your region that then on one end, strategize how to stand up for your rights to collate, to, to collaborate with organizations like Freedom Keepers United, Health Freedom for Humanity. But on the opposite end is realizing that once we have this cohesive community of people online, but also in person, you can't help but be imbibed, fermented, steeped in that culture of normalizing vibrant health for life. The vision of this is, is to help operationalize and strategically help people do both arms of health freedom. And the both arms, uh, they're strong. They're really strong because they have to hold a lot right now because there's so much to hold. So if somebody, I just felt this and I'm always, whenever I do a podcast, I'm always feeling who's with us. You know, I'm always, I'm always sensing who's with us. And I guarantee you right now, I I can feel it. Somebody right now is feeling so defeated. They're like, Stanton, what's the point why would I even join a community? Like, yeah, I'm a health freedom activist. I believe in health freedom for my family, but like the odds are too great, you know, and they feel that like defeatism. And I'll tell you, brother, I've felt it occasionally too, but it comes and goes like a leaf in the wind, right? Yeah. Because when I tune in with my heart, it's not real. But if somebody is in that place and they're like, yeah, what's the point? Like, first, what do you share with them from a heart intelligence level? And then how do they get supported in the community that you've built? Yeah. The first thing that I do is I recognize that I feel it too. That I, that, that I would say that we are as a species undergoing the greatest form of, gen, of generational trauma that we will ever know in humankind. I hope we will ever know. But what I know at the depths of our soul is that the human spirit sometimes feels like it's crushed, sometimes feels like it's completely extinguished. But my mentors have always taught me and they gave me this little framework that the, the human spirit can, can be crushed. But it's always a pilot light. 
it's always there. It always has an ability to have potentiality. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive. And because it has the potential to be stoked into a greater, maybe just a little bit of a flame, right? Or into like something like a bonfire or something like Southern California, you know, the heat of something like the fire waging is all going to come from community. The way and the reason why we feel that way is because they found a way to isolate us. They found a way to keep us and make us believe that what we believe is not normal. What we believe is the smallest minority. When we talked, many of my people that I've been working with for a long, like this 18 months, but for 11 years and then 16 years since I've known about all of this kind of, uh, mine was anthrax, right? Anthrax shot, that was a test forcing me to believe in something different than pharma, right? Is that when they say different disinformation dozen, they want you to think there's 12. And what my friends and I have put out there is we put hashtag more than 12. And what I shared with one of my friends or on a live the other day was that I've been canceled by so many people. Many of you have probably been canceled by your own family, by your own friends, by just wanting to be free and by just wanting to choose your own way and by not, you know, subsuming to this entire, you know, potential cartel or the, just not taking the shot. But I'll tell you this, we've lost friends. And just two weeks ago, I had somebody who's actually on staff for Health Freedom for Humanity, somebody I'm getting to know. And she goes, and somehow one of our friends who canceled me and my wife and my family is friends with them. They're family members by blood. And then that person reached out to us randomly and said, hey, how do you know this person? And they talked about how like there's this awakening that I repul like I, I made repulsive because I was speaking out. It had her cancel us. But somebody who's just a random person that just cares about health freedom, not an influencer, no platform, just by connecting and shifting and changing and create and planting a lot of those seeds, it hasn't happened yet, but I know what's happening next is my wife and this friend are going to come back together. And it's because of the power of community. And it's because of the power of recognizing that you're not alone. And it's going to be because when you're a part of a community like Future Generations, hopefully it's us, that you recognize that the potential to stoke that flame for your own human spirit, but to recognize that that stoke is happening in various forms, in various fields, every single day, as high as this tsunami wave of oppression has been coming, the human spirit and the human flame is absolutely going to be on the tail end and the far end of this, absolutely unextinguishable. We are never going to forget what happened in this moment because of how and why we've allowed ourselves to be inspired. Oh. And so... So good. <laughs> so good. I was getting emotional there listening to you. I was thinking about when I hold my boy, you know, yes. when, I hold, when I hold my son, what I will tell him when he's 10, 12 years old, you know, he'll ask me like, dad, what were you doing? Or what was it like, you know, when you, when you lived through this absolute attack on our country from the inside, what, what were you doing? I'll tell him, I was speaking my truth because I love you. That's what I'll tell them. It's and, and, and like the people that don't like there's tears in my eyes because all we have is our word. That's all we really have anymore. You know, like I said in the beginning from the Malcolm X quote, um, the media and the narrative now is making people that are loving evil and making people that are evil seem loving. Look at Cardi B's live stream with um, Biden, right? Yeah. Breasts out, sexuality, disgusting tentacles out there, infecting child's minds. Like we're in that, we're in that phase. And like the reason I, the reason I got watery eyed there is because like, I'm proud of what I'll tell him. I don't know what's gonna occur from now till then, but I'm proud of the stand that I'm taking. Not because I'm self-righteous, but because it's the fucking right thing to do. What else do we have in this world besides our word? What else are we supposed to do in this time? And so my heart goes out to anyone that's struggling with not having that mindset. Not that I'm better than you, but that is the awareness that Hawkins talks about, that Dispenza talks about, 
that Stanton Holm talks about, that Bush talks about, this awareness is the most important thing. But we can't have awareness unless we're free to have it. And that's why people need to join the futuregen.com forward slash community so you can speak your truth, so you can have this uncensored place to cry if you want to cry, to yell, to express, to get resources. Like, what's coming up for you when I share this now? My mantra from the very beginning of all this has been, what is the world that my daughter's going to inherit from me? And what am I going to do on a day-to-day -day basis to look her in the eye, to put my head down on my pillow at night, knowing that I fought for it. And then every morning when we read stories and when we're like, just, just in that moment where we get to connect that I can look her in the eye with the depth of integrity and just say, like, I fought for you because, and, and then you get physiologic, right? You get physiologic that my daughter was born with every egg essentially that she will ever have my grandkids are in my daughter already. Mm -hmm. And if you don't recognize the gravity, like that's like, like you're saying, I don't hold anybody to like, you know, I don't vilify or marginalize anybody for not being there yet. But what I said at the beginning in terms of us being called, like you feel it. I know, I know you feel it because it's always on the tail end of that tension of that mm -hmm. stress of that mm -hmm. trauma is on the far side of that is a power is a potentiality, is a purpose that most people didn't, we didn't ask for this. We didn't ask for this to happen this way. I didn't know that I was going to start speaking out like the way that I am. But what I know on a day-to-day -day basis is that I put my head on my pillow and I look my kid in the eye and, and I feel it to the depth of my soul that I did and laid it all on the line every single day. And what I want for everybody, if you are feeling that call, to join this community because there will be people who are just like you in it and there will be people just like me in it and there's going to be people that i've learned from in it and we needed a place not just to be um socially connected right it's not just a social mm -hmm. network sure. although it is it is a strategic it is an action-based it is a results-based community that we want to see absolutely make waves wherever you are in the world. Mm. This is the door that's opening. The, the, the door of possibility is here, right? The door is here. So actually there's two doors. There's one door on the left and uh, I'm not partial to left or right, whatever. What I, if you're ambidextrous, cool. If you're left-handed, it's all good. But there's a door on the left and the door on the left says, listen to the powers that be, do what you're told, don't worry, don't think, wear the mask, get the shot, lay down, do what you're told, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, get a 401k, do the things, have the boat, then die. Alan Watts calls it all wretch, no vomit. Everyone goes, Ugh, but nobody ever throws up the bullshit they've been fed. That's, that's door number one. Door number two is the futuregen.com forward slash community. And door number two, you have a place to breathe. You have a place to connect. You have a place to make decisions that are for your freedom of health. So what did we miss? We covered so much ground. Before I ask you the signature question, like what did we miss? We covered a lot of topics and what's, what's clear and present for you that maybe we didn't touch on? I'd say the only thing that I wanted to add as far as freedom goes is freedom. There's no guarantees with freedom. Like freedom, I've called from the very beginning of all this, it's the greatest equalizer known in human physiology and human life and life experience. And that it just makes it, like you said, possible. It, it plants the seed, it's, it's fertile ground for the seed of potentiality, which is ultimate ownership, ultimate responsibility, like that total ownership energy of your life experience. And hopefully that is to find absolutely vibrant health and expression of your innate potential, right? Your innate genetic potential. And on the opposite end is preserving those rights and that potentiality for the rest of your days, right? Mm -hmm. For the rest of your future generations, right? For me, I've like, I was asked this question, would you let your kid go to West Point? And my wife is wholly against it. Right. And I was like, you know what, if it was her dream, right. But after watching and promoting and actually being some of the first media in our podcast to highlight the oppression that happened at West Point. I was like, absolutely not. Mm. And that at this point, every dream, job, profession, school, anything 
that is tied to the stripping of rights, sovereignty, and freedom has to be questioned at this point. I wanted to leave that with people because freedom isn't this kind of pie in the sky thing. Freedom is just the base level. It is the literal foundation for every potential dream that you could ever imagine. And that's what, you know, people like us, people like you are standing in a hard line for today. You have a beautiful way of explaining things. And as you say goodbye with your military experience, with your family coming over from their oppression, with the oppression we're in now, with this question of health freedom, with health freedom being a possibility and a door that is swinging open, how do you see wellness now? How do, how do you see the physical, the, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, and also the financial? I feel like the financial is something we yeah. signed up for. Um, how do you see wellness? What does wellness mean to you? Wellness means to me, you know what's what's crazy, Josh, is wellness means exactly what it means to me when I read that first book. Oh my goodness. There's a baby boy. I'm going to hold my son while you answer the question. Oh my goodness. There's nothing that gets me more distracted than seeing a kid and a baby. Oh my goodness. So you actually changed my answer. Wellness is to me, the diet that you have in your arms mm -hmm. is recognizing that taking the total responsibility of our lives today in every aspect, everything that you shared from the physical to the emotional, to the spiritual, to the energetic, to the financial, that that is imbued in our actions that will echo into our future generations to help us remember. I don't think we know what human potential is today. I think we have various levels of oppression that we are sifting through, but I believe with what we're communicating, what we believe in and what we're doing and what you're teaching, we will see our kids, their kids and the future generations realize what that truest potential is, which is absolutely normalizing vibrant health, vibrant, vibrant health for life and future generations. He's <laughs> so cute, man. I'm so, so, so distracted. <laughs> so, it's, so in post, in post, uh, please edit this properly. So, um, <laughs> You answered so beautifully from Nova and my heart and everyone's heart that's been a part of this incredible conversation, which I love so much. Nova and Josh and Stanton and you, this is our path. So until we all see you again, my family is wishing your family love and wellness. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, he's fucking, so cute, man. That was a fucking awesome podcast, dude. Was it? That's, that's going to do so good. Holy I'm shit. I'm sweating a little bit. No, it was really, really passionate. Like I, man, he's I've, so I've been cute, in a journey man. lately where I've been like, what is going on with my podcast? We, we have, um, for whatever reason, I don't know if we're being shadow banned. I just had a call with a specialist and he's like, dude, I think you're being shadow banned. He's like, you're doing all the right things. You're, you're great content, great SEO, great tags, great marketing. And, um, yeah, we're just, we're just, we're slowly fizzling out. Interesting. And I'm like, you know, that's where my bread, that's, that's the majority of my revenue is the podcast yeah. traction. So yeah. what I do with you is a passion project, you know, our, our work together. Of course. And so it's like, yeah, I'm really being challenged now to step up to the plate and, and me be even more of a speaker than I am so that I can test and figure out where I'm going to land. So I'm right there with you, bro. I'm, I'm right there with you, dude. Yeah. I'm being attacked in, in a very similar way. Dude, I'm very grateful to see him in real yeah, time. Yeah, isn't he wonderful? Oh my goodness. He's like so, look at his roles. He's got them already. Like oh Dr. my Holmes. goodness. Hi, bud. Yeah. Hi, Nova. Virtual, virtual human yeah. on a screen. Yeah. Oh, He's man. actually pretty chill right now. He just wanted to get that skin to skin contact. But um, he's 13.2 pounds. He's six weeks old. He's, he went from seven and 11. And now he's at 13.2. Wow, he passed my, my, my nephew. My nephew trying to tell us that he wasn't. 11. Oh, really? Eight yep. weeks and eleven? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he was he was little too at the beginning. He okay. was like he was like six something, and so he's grown a lot. But but this guy's got some chunks. I love it. Yeah, he's. And awesome. they they will do that. They will continually do that. And then you know we didn't get into this. It's like 
people ask me all the time, like now it's like, I used to look for a pediatrician for people, you know, I, I used to. Uh, yeah. And now I, the question, which I believe I asked you, it's like, what do you need them for? You know, mm-hmm. is, is mm-hmm. probably a better question at this stage. And so with your kind of background in indie birth and I, I said, indie, I said free instead of indie. Sorry about that. No, it's, um, it's fine. It's all but, good. but for me, what I know is that the whole pedi- pediatric medical field could outside of emergencies could go away, like completely mm. go away. Yeah. And there's a, yeah. there's a couple medical doctors who say it way more fiery than I do. Cause I, I that's well, not a bridge that I cross on interviews yet. But, yeah, dude. No, I mean, it was yeah. the most traumatic thing I've been through the yeah. birth experience. And yeah. um, I mean, he's, he's worth it, but like, you know, there's just needs to be, there needs to be this middle road. There needs to be this middle road, just like Lao Tzu talks about, just like yeah. all masters talk about. Yeah. Um, and that middle road includes pull from the West, pull from the East, use all the tools in the middle and make it as natural as humanly possible. <clears throat> yeah. Because, and because I, even, even imagination yeah. is nature, right? So, yeah. so the tools that have been created to support birth when things go haywire, that's still nature. So I'm not anti that, but, but there's yeah. a middle. In the middle of the two. So, so I would say you're you're exactly right that the middle needs to be west and east. But I would say we need to draw a hard line at like 99% natural or more. Yeah. You know, like it, yeah. like I think the percentage of infiltration of of anything synthetic or anything artificial or anything not necessarily outside outside of nature is has got to be almost zero. Every single one we don't. I don't think we know the gravity of to to how. Well, the, 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 the far end is that I've had newborns come in on five medications, right? And then we have people that are just like, yeah, you know, I, we do um, this, you know, we, we do, you know, we do Tylenol. It's like, well, Tylenol is absolutely de- detrimental, good to thione. And all the, you know, you got like the, the simple things that just like a little bit of this, it's like, uh, actually there's way more natural things that you could actually have at your fingertips. And so um, anyways, I really, really, really appreciate one, your time and being able to do that, but getting to see him at the end, that like, that is like, I don't know if you plan that, but that's no, really no, like she's heart. getting a massage. Yeah. And so it's her first, it's her first massage. I'm like, how is this yeah. your first massage after, you know, we're, we're trying to find the right person. So but in my yeah. heart, it was like that, that's, that's the only way to, to end an episode like that is because for you to yeah. actually orate, like what you know, the meaning of having him in your life is, and at the same yeah. time for me to be able to do that, well, I think just bring it all the way back to just home base, you know? Well, I'm going to leave all this in. So y'all on YouTube watching us, we love you. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Stanton. I'll see you soon. I right, love you, Josh. I really day. appreciate you, too, brother. Peace. <laughs>